Thank you, uh, Congressman Fortenberry and Chairman Schuller, for the opportunity to visit with you. Um, I hope my testimony will be of some value to the committee and their considerations. Um, as the first registered producer of biodiesel in Nebraska, I've been involved with developments in my state from the ground floor and just recently commissioned the largest operating biodiesel facility in the state. The energy farm in northeast Nebraska that I own is energy self-sufficient as in currently is in use as an energy training facility. I co-founded the Nebraska Renewable Energy Association in 2006 and I'm currently focused on the needed processing of the materials that will supply the second generation oils to the market. Uh, travel to and from this uh, hearing will be petroleum free using 100% Nebraska made biodiesel. We started building biodiesel facility two years ago. Soybean oil was 23 cents a pound, which reflected the 10 year average. Soybean oil now is trading at 67 cents a pound, reflecting its historically strong correlation with petroleum crude oil. Um, biodiesel production cost is heavily dependent on feedstock price. Uh, and an additional dollar a gallon is required to convert this oil to meet ASTM requirements for biodiesel. As a result of this surge in costs, uh, almost half of the biodiesel production capacity built in the last three years is currently offline. Similar price surges has also, have also been seen in animal fats and used vegetable oil markets. It is clear that the first generation of feedstocks available for biodiesel have run their course. To meet these short-term needs, industry has turned to waste and low-value streams to substitute for first-use oils. Removal of the oil-rich fraction of corn prior to ethanol production uh, is an excellent opportunity since the oil actually inhibits ethanol fermentation. This oil is also a limiting factor of the DDG, the dry distiller's grain that comes out of the process as animal feed. The average 40 million gallon ethanol plant can realistically supply 2 to 3 million gallons of high-value corn oil. In terms of regulatory requirements, biodiesel facilities are characterized as chemical processing facilities. While environmental and personal safety must always be ensured, current regulatory requirements are a tremendous cost for the renewable business, small, small business owner. Nationally, an exponential expansion of the feedstock pool is required to make a significant impact on the petroleum diesel consumption levels. If all of the uh, fats and oils currently grown in the U.S., over 950 million acres of agriculture were used, all of them we would supply, supplant two, 10 to 12 percent of our petroleum diesel consumption across our country. I will, and, and that is not possible to do. I will only mention two of the most promising examples of future feedstocks that offer this exponential increase of the available pool. First, biomass and waste-fed gasification. This can be used to create the building block of organic chemistry known as syngas. This syngas can then be reformed to a liquid using 100-year-old German chemistry techniques back to a liquid, which is how they were able to make liquid fuel from coal for two world wars. With this technology, waste and low-grade materials can be recovered into renewable diesel or renewable ethanol. The efficiencies of small business research efforts are needed here. Uh, second, algae production is a tremendous growth area with small businesses leading the way in innovative applications. Algae has been shown to provide over 50 times the productivity per acre as soybean and will actually expand the available food stream by adding a completely new and protein-rich food and feed supplement. Nebraska is at its first algae project announced this week in a rural area owned by small business. This project is being developed by a renewable energy firm that grew out of my original work within the broad spectrum of available technologies. This algae project will recy recycle processed waste heat from an oil seed crushing facility and biomass combustion emissions to boost photosynthetic production of these oils and, play and process them in-house, closed loop. Decentralized growth of algae and production of oil could be done most quickly through municipal waste facilities where treatment, capacity, and food are currently available. Large facilities and processing infrastructure will take time to construct. Small business innovation is once again in the best position to develop this technology in the short term. A tremendous boost for decentralized utilization and small business production of alternative biofuels would be to exempt all biofuel producers from state and federal road taxes up to 5,000 gallons per year. These producers would need to show verification of biofuel gallons used and not necessarily ASTM certification of fuel quality. Significant expansion of the successful grant programs currently in place are essential in supporting small business and meeting the challenges of supplying these second generation feedstocks. Biodiesel itself is a trademark term and is defined by the industry ASTM standards. Non-ASTM renewable diesel or straight vegetable oils can also run diesel motors. 
But to gain access to the dollar gallon tax credit, ASTM standards must be met and these oftentimes represent a significant burden to the small producer. While any fuel and general distribution must meet strict, strict criteria, small businesses that produce and use these materials for themselves or, con or convert the motors to allow their use cannot gain access to this tax credit, even though the use directly replaces petroleum diesel consumption. The original diesel engine designed by Rudolf Diesel 100 years ago at, uh, was designed to run on these straight oils. I have provided power to my energy farm for years using a renewable diesel from animal fats, waste, and alternative seed oils uh, that could not technically be called biodiesel, although it replaces petroleum diesel. Uh, future feedstocks will also challenge the strict soy-driven ASTM standard requirements. The tax credit of a dollar a gallon should be extended to any renewable biodiesel or biofuel that is used to directly displace the consumption of petroleum-based diesel or gasoline. In closing, small business will remain a leading and cost-effective innovator in this critical area. The decentralized energy product production systems being developed in many cases could be of significant value to U.S. military, homeland security, or FEMA. These agencies could greatly benefit from the creation of a streamlined process to partner with small businesses that can support the goals of these agencies for continued operations without requiring vulnerable energy logistical support. I thank you for the invitation to address this body and your interest in the er this area, and I would be glad to provide any uh, answers to questions.